I'm John Goodenough, head of the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Texas at Austin. Well, I haven't followed the market that much, but a good technology will always find the market eventually. Well, lead acid batteries will, may continue to start your vehicles. They do recycle, so that's important. Most of the lead gets recycled. As far as the uh, cadmium nickel or the metal hydride nickel battery is concerned, those are good. But remember, they both those batteries operate on aqueous electrolytes. And if you have an aqueous electrolyte, you cannot have a stable shelf life if the battery gives you more than one and a half volts. So you're restricted with a rechargeable battery with a long shelf life to one and a half volts with, a, with an aqueous electrolyte. So those batteries will not make it to uh, large scale uh, battery technologies. However, the zinc air battery may make it for uh, stationary storage because it can have a big capacity to make up for the small voltage. But I think it may have a hard time to compete with other things that come down the pike. The problem with the lithium ion battery is that it uses a flammable liquid electrolyte. Now, it has, I would say, three principal disadvantages. Not only is it flammable, but when you try to plate a lithium or a sodium ion anode, they form dendrites, and the dendrites can grow across that electrolyte give you an internal short circuit with incendiary consequences. And the third thing is the, the window of the electrolyte. That is the voltage that you can have and still have a long cycle life is limited. The people in Hydro-Quebec have taken and made an Li4-Ti5012 anode and a lithium iron phosphate olivine structure for the cathode to make a, a battery of long cycle life, 10,000 cycles or more, to uh, back up the grid in a wind farm in northern Quebec. And I think they're working very hard to market that particular battery for that purpose. But as far as an electric vehicle is concerned, you will not get the volumetric energy density that you need and you you can use it for hybrid cars but not for an all electric car but, well even with the with the smartphones and so on you're frustrated because you can't charge too fast mm -hmm. it uses a carbon anode and when you charge too fast, you plate lithium on the surface of the carbon, and then it grows dendrites, and you have a safety problem. Not only that, but when you use the, the lithium cobalt or nickel cobalt anode, if you overcharge, you evolve oxygen. And so that's a problem too. So therefore, when Tesla makes a, car, a battery for a car with 7,000 cells, he has to manage those 7,000 cells, and the management system is as expensive as the battery itself. 
and it doesn't have the cycle life, and so after two years, you got to pay another $28,000 to get a new battery. But maybe the people who like to show off with the Tesla are very happy to <laughs> pay an extra $28,000. <laughs>
a good voltage, better than three volts, if you use another thing, but the capacity may not be quite so high. So we've yet to see. And the battery companies are the ones who will make products according to what is the particular industry they want to serve. And, uh, I think that the batteries we do, you can make them either, they're not lithium ion batteries anymore. They're lithium batteries or sodium batteries. Her glass actually transports sodium as well or better than the lithium, all right? So we can plate sodium and we can plate sodium from one side to the other and so on. So, <clears throat> There will be both lithium and sodium batteries on the market, and it's important because the sodium availability is ubiquitous as long as you're near a sea, and uh, the lithium is not necessarily in friendly countries, and you may be back like you are with the oil, mm -hmm. <laughs> having to do gunboat diplomacy in order to be sure you have the have access to the lithium.